In this video, we're going to discuss expected value, variance, and standard deviation, as well as how to calculate it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the expected value, the expected value of a discrete random variable x is equal to the sum of the product of all possible values of x multiplied by their probability of occurrence. So that's the technical definition, but what is expected value? Effectively, expected value is the average of an event that might occur on the long run. So if given thousands of attempts, what on average are you expected to see? That is what expected value is. Now, I wanna hesitate for a second just to say that there is a difference between your simple arithmetic average, which is what a lot of people are accustomed to doing. That is where you take the sum of all your observed values of X, then you divide by the total number. That's of course not what we're calculating here. Here we're calculating the sum of all possible values of X multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So acknowledging that each event of X may occur with a different probability than the other one. So we have to take that into account. So let's break down this equation in a little bit more detail. So what this says here is that the expected value of X is equal to the sum of the observed value of X times its corresponding probability of X. Now, you do, you do this multiplication for every single observed value of X and a nice little trick to see or to make sure that you've included all the possible values of X is to take each one of the observed probabilities and ensure that the sum of those probabilities is equal to one. Now we can go ahead and we can talk about standard deviation and variance. So let's st start with variance because variance is kind of our starting point and then we get to standard deviation. So variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. That is its technical definition. Uh, simplistically, we can think of variance as the measure of variability of data about your mean, but we simply use it to calculate standard deviation. Oftentimes variance doesn't hold a lot of insightful information for us. Typically what we rely on is interpretation of statistics is from standard deviation. So standard deviation is, just, is a statistical measure that looks at how far a group of numbers is uh, from its mean. So how far apart the numbers are in a data set. No less, we need to know how to calculate this so we can work through this. So our Variance, let's start there, because there's this relationship between standard deviation and variance where the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. In other words, the standard deviation squared is equal to the variance. So let's start with variance. So all this says is our variance, our variance of x is equal to the sum of the observed va value of x minus the expected value of x squared times the probability that that event X occurs. Importantly, again, if you were to sum up all the probabilities of X in this equation, you should get a sum of one. That, that's for the probabilities only. If you were to take the probabilities and sum them all up, you would add up to one. And I'll show you that in a worked example in a second. Now, standard deviation on the other hand, so standard deviation of X is equal to sigma. This is just another way that we represent standard deviation in statistics. Typically, sigma is reserved for uh, standard deviations of a population, um, and we typically write SDX for something like a standard deviation of a sample, um, but I'll leave that to you to establish your own notation standards. So what we see here is that the standard deviation of X is equal to the square root of the variance of X. Now, if we just pay attention to what's underneath the square root right here, what do we notice? Well, this equation is exactly equal to the variance equation. The only difference is that we're taking the square root of the variance. So that relationship that the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared or the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance holds true. Now, the only real way to get familiar with this is to do a practice problem. So let's go ahead and do a practice problem together. So here is my practice problem. So an orthodontist has three financing packages and each has a different service charge. She estimates that 30% of the patients use the first plan, which has a $10 finance charge. 50% use the second plan, which has a $20 finance charge. 
And the uh, third plan has a $30 financing charge and 20% of patients use that. So in our question, we're asked to calculate the expected value of the service charge. So let's go ahead and do that. So our expected value of our service charge is equal to the sum of all observed values of x times their corresponding probability of x. So what we do there is we take our first observed value. We notice that is $10. $10 times its probability of occurrence, we see that that happens 30% of the time. So times 0 0.30 plus $20, the second observed value of x, times the probability that that occurs, well that occurs 50% of the time, plus the third observed value of x, which is $30, and times its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.20. Now just remember, as I said before, you can check to make sure that you have all the observed values of x by simply adding their probabilities. So if we wanted to do the probability of x, it's just equal to 0 0.30 plus 0 0.50 plus 0 0.20. This equals one. So we are fairly confident that we have all of the corresponding probabilities. So let's go ahead and break down this math. So $10 times 0 0.3 gives us $3 plus $20 times 0 0.5 is $10 plus $30 times 0 0.2 is $6. So we can add this up together and what do we have? Well, three plus 10 is 13, plus six is $19. So we have an expected value of the service charge of $19, meaning on average, customers will spend $19 in service fees for the financing plan at the orthodontist. So part A is done, good for us. Now we can move on to part B, and we're asked to calculate the standard deviation of the service charge. Now that's great, but we're gonna start with calculating the variance because we know that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So let's go ahead and look at this. So the variance of our service charge is equal to, we'll just write out the equation here, the observed value of x minus the expected value of x squared times the probability that, that event occurs. So the observed value of x for the first plan is $10 minus the expected value, which is $19 squared times the probability that that occurs, and that occurs 30% of the time, plus $20 minus the expected value, $19 squared times the probability that that event occurs, which is 50% of the time, plus the observed value, which is $30, minus our calculated expected value, which is $19 squared, times the probability that that event occurs, that occurs 20% of the time. So let's break this into steps. So 10 minus 19 gives us ne negative nine squared, gives us squared dollars, $81 squared, times 0 0.30, plus 20 minus 19 squared gives us one squared dollar times 0 0.50 plus 30 minus 19 gives us 11 squared gives us 121 again this is in dollars squared times 0 0.20 so 81 times 0 0.3 gives us 24.3, this is still in squared dollars, plus one dollar squared times 0 0.5, of course gives us 0 0.5 dollars squared, or 50 cents squared, plus 121 dollars squared, gives us 24.2 dollars squared, 
So our sum here is 24.2 plus 0 0.5 plus 24.3, which gives us $49 squared. Now, what is a squared dollar? I honestly couldn't tell you. And this is why the standard deviation is more commonly the metric that we look to in statistics. So we're not done. We're asked to calculate the standard deviation. So our standard deviation of our service charge is equal to the square root of the variance of our service charge. So this is equal to the square root of $49 squared, which of course we take the square root of a square dollar, we end up with dollars, square root of 49 is seven. So just like that, we have calculated the expected value, the variance and the standard deviation. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.